okay why don't jewish believe jesus is the messiah but there is proof in the bible so this answer will be given to us by the jewish rabbi on this matter let's watch it. so after the last time you explained why jesus could not be the messiah i got lots of replies lots of replies saying but there is a lot of evidence in the hebrew bible that says that jesus must be the messiah and i'll list them he was born in beth the messiah will be born in bethlehem uh, born of a virgin, heir to the King David's throne. Uh, Isaiah describes the Messiah must, will be crucified for his sins. Uh, the Messiah would be resurrected from the dead uh, and would come before the destruction of the temple. These are the, the highlights that I, they gave me uh, lists. So could you speak to that? Uh, yeah, uh, the issue of course, why uh Judaism traditionally does not accept that Jesus as the Messiah, and uh, you have heard a number of arguments, a number of purported proofs. Uh, so if we go through them, obviously uh, some of these proofs are relatively meaningless. Born in Bethlehem means nothing because there were plenty of people born in Bethlehem. Uh, being a descendant of King David, well indeed we do believe in our tradition that the Messiah will be a descendant of King David, but once again, uh, that doesn't prove the converse, that a descendant of King David uh, is the Messiah. Huh? Uh, moreover, uh, within the uh, New Testament itself, and again, I, I, I accept that Christians probably have an answer, but once again, the concept that uh, Jesus is descended from David is via Joseph, when in fact the doctrine of the virgin birth seems to connote a uh, different father. So Christianity is going to have to deal with that contradiction in and of itself, but okay, again, I, I, I assume they probably have some resolution uh, to, that, to that problem. Uh, the issue of the Messiah coming before the destruction of the temple, I honestly do not know a source for that. Our tradition is exactly the, the opposite. That's Daniel 9.26. Well, again, uh, these verses can be interpreted in different ways. The book of Daniel is notoriously obscure. Hmm. And the fact that uh, a Christological interpretation is offered cannot be considered proof because there are many alternative interpretations. Now, uh, the general messianic uh, redemption that's described both in the Hebrew Bible and in the Talmud uh, does suggest the opposite, that there will be a galut, which means a, uh, an exile, there will be a destruction, and the Messiah will come and be God's agent for redemption and for rebuilding the, the, the temple. Uh, now, uh, the interesting, uh, one interesting text that they do cite is the notion of the virgin birth. And here I do want to point out that this is a famous controversy. There is indeed a prophecy in Isaiah uh, that talks about the, and I'll use the Hebrew word, the Alma conceiving and giving birth to a child and uh, the Christian understanding of the word Alma is Alma equals virgin. In point of fact, that is not the Hebrew word for virgin. Uh, uh, virgin. The Hebrew word for virgin is bitula. Uh, Alma actually means a young woman, and it does not connote whether it's a virginal state or not. And, uh, Meaning in all sources of the time, Alma would be used to mean just a young that, woman. That is correct. Uh, Elam is a young boy, and Alma is a young woman. And in the overall context of the verse, it's a little difficult to uh, go over the, the particulars, it is not referring to Messiah at all. It is not even a messianic prophecy. Oh. It is a prophecy regarding the birth of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, Chizkiyo HaMelech, who was the dominant king in the time of Isaiah, who successfully deflected the Assyrian attack on Jerusalem. So he was a quasi-messianic figure. But in fact, it is not talking about either the virgin birth, nor is it even talking about the ultimate Messiah. Uh, the final text, though, is they do talk about uh, the crucifixion of the Messiah, which is, again, Isaiah 53, uh, which talks about the suffering servant of God, indeed. Uh, and in many, many ways, one could look at various uh, facts in Jesus' life and match them up with uh, the prophecy in Isaiah. I understand that that is a possible interpretation. I just want to say, though, that we have a whole vast corpus of Jewish interpretation of Isaiah 53, in which they regard the suffering servant as not a reference to an individual, 
but as a reference to the overall fate of the Jewish people that has suffered through century after century of persecution and in effect bears the sin of the world. And that's part of the mysterious redemptive process that through suffering and destruction there is new birth and creation and rejuvenation. I may be getting out on a limb here even among my Jewish friends, and, and that is in, in, in some ways much of uh, the Christian symbolism of the crucifixion is in a sense building on a mystical view of the Jewish people themselves. Uh, this concept that through suffering on behalf of the world, the, the, the world is somehow brought to a better and deeper and more spiritual place, uh, we kind of go with that symbolism as well, except we apply it to the entire uh, Jewish nation as opposed to an isolated person. So if you look at the classical biblical commentaries, you will see that the suffering servant of God, according to many, is interpreted as a reference to the Jewish people. Uh, so, as I say, uh, a text cannot be a proof if there are multiple interpretations of a text. So, yes, if you interpret text A to mean X, then you can prove your proposition, but it doesn't have to mean X. There are many, many alternative interpretations. And uh, how do you choose among them, I think, is whether or not it is consistent with your overall theological orientation. I had mentioned before, without repeating everything in my earlier talk, that uh, we do not believe primarily that uh, the Messiah will have a second coming. Once the Messiah comes, he will complete his mission, which uh, Jesus did not do. Uh, we cannot accept that, although we cannot accept the uh, abrogation of the Sinaitic Covenant because it is part of our theology that the Torah that was given to Moses remains binding. Now I understand there's a great deal of debate uh, even among Christians uh, whether Jesus himself taught the abrogation of the uh, mitzvot or that was a product of Paul later and I, again I, I don't want to enter into that debate. Uh, but certainly, if it is a teaching of Christianity that the uh, covenant of Sinai and the 613 mitzvot are no longer binding, that is not uh, an acceptable position in, in Jewish theology. Uh, again, perhaps going on thin ice, uh, Maimonides writes in a censored passage in his writing, it was taken out by Christian censors in the Middle Ages, that he saw both Christianity and Islam as being very worthwhile steps to wean the ancient world away from paganism and to give them a sense of morality and ethics, even if it didn't always play out that way. So I'm certainly not here to disparage these sincere beliefs of other people, and indeed uh, religion can often be a tremendous force for goodness, although sometimes it works the other way around. Uh, but uh, certainly I, I, I cannot say that the Jewish texts are proofs uh, for Christian beliefs since uh, we in our own tradition have absolutely alternative and contradictory interpretations of those very texts. So that's my little piece. All right. So mm, I would say based on their own religion, you get it, based on their own religion, they do not believe Jesus is the Messiah. But when it comes to the Bible, it's a proof. They even mentioned it so many times in the Bible. So that was what the man actually asked. But the man didn't give me the answer I was expecting from him. Why don't Jewish believe Jesus is the Messiah if in the Bible is a proof? Yes, it can be a proof in the Bible and it's not a proof in Torah. That should be what I was expecting. That. Yes, Bible says so, that Jesus is the Messiah. But in the, in the, in the Torah, for the Judaism people, they, they believe that the Messiah will come from King David descendants. But since Jesus does not come from King David, David is then descendants. That means they do not believe he's a Messiah. That was a very short and simple one where I, I was expecting him to say. And so now he was not talking about Mary, you know, trying to bring his point from Mary's side, going to, yes, he's trying to let us understand what they, they they believe in their religion as Jewish people, what they believe 
that we not really just says about Jesus and Mary. But regardless, that was a beautiful one. At least I learned interesting things, some new things about their religion, relating it to the Bible. That was a beautiful one. Let me know your point of view regarding this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.